The class that I teach is uh, related uh, to musical acoustics, <clears throat> and there are a number of aspects of it. Everyone today seems to have a small home project studio or recording studio. Um, you can go to, um, down to a major chain music store and buy everything you need. Uh, and unlike when I started in the, in the business uh, decades ago, when you, if you wanted to really do that, a good portion of it, whether it was for recording or for live sound, you had to create and build it yourself. Uh, today you can buy everything. And learning to operate the equipment is, is daunting uh, to many people and uh, difficult. And so we teach extensive and in-depth recording courses here and courses in uh, computer uh, audio, uh, Pro Tools, and, and all the others. But the one missing component is the acoustical environment in which all of this is accomplished. So I teach the basics of acoustics. Um, uh, we touch a little bit upon how microphones actually function, how loudspeakers actually function, and how studio monitor loudspeakers actually interface with the room. Uh, the, the, the basic functions of the acoustical environment are uh, absorption, diffraction, diffusion, uh, reverberation, uh, the reverberant field, uh, reflections, um, initial time delay gap, uh, time related uh, aspects of how sound travels and uh, uh, the related comb filtering and phantom images and all of that in the studio. But I also relate that to the concert hall. So I will take them to our concert hall here on campus, and then we will discuss at length how the concert hall experience is uh, impacted by the acoustical design of the venue and what the key issues in concert hall acoustics are. And I try to, to relate how those components actually tie in with the acoustical environment in a recording studio or in a control room and the mixing environment. Um, to, to give them a broad sense of how sound behaves in different size spaces. And then we also investigate how sound works in a, or behaves in a, a high level situation such as a concert, a pop music concert or rock concert. And the demands on the loudspeaker, the coverage angles of the arrays, uh, the basic array theory and um, and related aspects. And we do some interesting field trips as well. We were just over at Bernie Grunman Mastering last week and uh, this Thursday we'll be at JBL at the Engineering Lab and be uh, inside their anechoic chambers and discussing measurement and how we quantify the behavior of a loudspeaker and then relate that to what people perceive is a quality loudspeaker. Uh, and there's been quite a bit of statistical analysis done and listening tests, so we'll be in the listening lab there, and I'm going to subject them to, uh, I've already given them some training with a training program, so they're going to be uh, uh, in double-blind listening and doing loudspeaker evaluations, and we'll tabulate the data at the end of the evening and see how well they did, how consistent they were. <laughs> so uh, I also teach by, in that respect we teach listening as well and how to become a, a, a better than average really a, a trained listener so that you can begin to divorce what you hear in the music from what the loudspeaker and the room might be doing to you um, so it, it's 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 multi-layered and uh, uh, you know of course this is a course that could go on for years but it's, uh, I, I try to give them an introduction to each one of these basic areas so that they have some tools with which to uh, uh, go on and, and uh, do some further study and, and develop their skills in this regard. But really it all comes down to controlling your environment and eliminating the hidden variables. And of course in acoustics you can't see really, you can't see how sound behaves so you have to be somewhat intuitive about it and learn the, the uh, the theory so that you can attack it from a practical standpoint. I'm not teaching them to be acousticians, I'm teaching them to be, um, how would I phrase this, I, I'm giving them defensive uh, training in order to not be trapped by some unknown acoustical quantity that will make a recording turn out bad or will create a concert experience that will be a disaster 
because of something that they weren't aware of. So I'm trying to, to give them a broad acoustical awareness. And then if they want to go on, and, and uh, some, some students do that, uh, they go on, uh, take uh, perhaps engineering courses in physics, and, and then, uh, or we've had students who have just gone out and signed on with a, an acoustical engineering firm and learned it from the ground up. I have one young lady who's just gotten her second job and moved to San Diego and she's designing very complex audio video systems um, and learned most of what she learned on the job from a, a very uh, very powerful mentoring uh, relationship with a local acoustical and electrical consultant. So um, there's a lot of ways you can approach that but once again it takes entrepreneurial spirit to go out and and to figure out what it is that you need to know in order to do um, that job that you're interested in and she got interested in this she was going to go to law school got interested in her last semester here and I helped connect her with uh, a local consultant uh, who was uh, good enough to really teach her hands-on for three years and and she's quite accomplished now so a lot of ways to approach this